Welcome back to Devotions. I feel special today. I've got, we're going to, this is the old logo for First Christians. So this is now a vintage t-shirt. So I got a vintage t-shirt on today. I love that. Welcome to Thursday. If you're watching this on Thursday, we are starting into a brand new series of sermons on Sunday that are going to lead us right into Easter. And I'm really excited about them because we're, we're going to be talking exclusively about Jesus, but maybe Jesus from an angle that you haven't thought about or haven't uh, thought about in a long time. And we're going to actually be springboarding off of the He Gets Us ad campaign that you've probably been seeing on TV. Um, but but that's what's coming. Today, we're going to talk one last time about what we read in Paul's words in Romans. Uh, I specifically want to pay attention to Paul's words in Romans chapter 13, verse 13. That seems like um, doubly unlucky scripture address somehow. But There's some really interesting language from Paul there. He says, Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. There's an old saying that nothing good ever happens after midnight. So I went back and, and tried to kind of figure out, as Paul's saying, hey, act like you should in the daylight, in the daytime. Is there an origin to this phrase, hey, nothing good ever happens after midnight? It it keeps going back and back and back as you research it through the ages, and it gets to be earlier and earlier times, okay? There's nothing good that ever happens after 10 p.m. That was instituted by a yoga instructor to convince his students to go to sleep earlier for better health. Um, There's nothing good that ever happens after sunset, okay? That goes actually back to the pioneer days. Um, There's even a a biblical precedent that goes back uh, and and makes the case that nothing good ever happens after twilight uh, because everyone in ancient times would basically settle into their homes and close up their doors and their windows at that point. But having said all of that, I think we catch the meaning of Paul when he says, behave decently as in the daytime. Even though we scoff at curfews when we were teenagers, um, uh, because we, we, we made fun of them and said, well, when is actually too late, too late? Uh, when, the, when it was said that you, you couldn't be out on a date beyond a certain time, um, we still knew that the later that it got, the more tired that we got, the more rebellious things were more likely to happen in the later hours than in the afternoon, okay? We may have made fun of it, but it did make sense. And if we don't understand it, Paul clears up the meaning for it. He says, behave like you should in the daytime, not drunk or in sexual immorality or debauchery or dissension or jealousy. I mean, Paul's not pulling any punches on clarity here, but let me push it a little bit further. Um, Not further in, in obvious forms of godlessness, but maybe more hidden forms. Paul calls for us to behave like it's daytime, behave like we um, are, are, hide, are not hiding in the shadows or, or like we're not locked up behind closed doors. Perhaps just as guilty an activity as, as some of those clearly listed by Paul uh, are lives of absolutely no activity. Okay? Let us behave beyond the walls of our Sunday worship service in such a way that doesn't put our faith in hiding. Okay? May we live with lives that are open and, and, and where our lives and our love for Jesus flows through us in visible and clear ways um, beyond the hour that we spend on Sunday morning in worship, okay? Don't let your faith be asleep or hidden under a bowl. Let your light shine for all to see that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Maybe nothing good ever happens after midnight. Maybe nothing good ever happens after 10 p.m. Never, maybe nothing good ever happens after sunset. But there are lots of good things that happen before. And there are lots of good things that can happen in your life beyond the time that we spend on Sunday morning in worship, beyond the time that you have kind of carved out for God. Your whole life is carved out for God. So may the goodness and the selflessness and the love of God shine through in the way that you live your life, in your sphere of influence, in your social universe, Every waking hour of your life, that's perhaps the more important message for us to get than worrying about where the cutoff time is for when good things happen and bad things happen. May the good things flow through your life and lead people closer to Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
God, we thank you for the encouragement from Paul, for the, the strength of Paul's words and the clarity that he brings. God, would, would we not just try and shy away from those things that would um, be bad examples of you and bad examples of the life that we have in you, but may we more clearly recognize the opportunity we have to do good things, to put on the armor of light, to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, to be a light and let our light shine. God, help us to do that this week. May it shine through in the relationships that we have and the, the connections that we, we come in contact with this week. May we live for you. May we be your light. May we be your witnesses. May we be your testimony into the lives of others and lead people closer to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I, I hope that uh, this has been meaningful to you as we've gone through Romans. But as we head into this next series, as we talk about the life of Jesus, um, this is going to be a moment for, for not only you to be encouraged about your relationship with Christ, but, but an opportunity to, to share Jesus with other people, to start conversations that may lead to really good places uh, in, in the, the weeks ahead. And so we, I, I just hope that you are ready uh, to, to talk about Jesus, to invite people to hear about Jesus. And as we get closer and closer to Easter in a time when people are very open to, to letting uh, church and faith and religion be part of their life for that moment, uh, there's an invitation time that is waiting in your life that's coming up. So may you shine uh, for Jesus and be his witness in the days ahead. Have a great week.